Hi everyone, welcome to Bumblebee Crafts. Thanks for tuning in to another video from me. It's part three of my um, lovely woodland journal and we've been making the cover, we've been doing some pages, lots of little bits. Um, today I just want to work on some ephemera pieces to stuff in the pockets. Um, so yeah, I haven't turned the signature in yet because I'm waiting for one page to still to dry. Um, but uh, when we come back for part four, um, it will just be a flip through. So, yeah, let's make some ephemera today. So I wanted to start with making a couple more of these cute little tags. I was inspired by another member of um, Rachel's design team, um, Cheryl. Um, and um, she was layering up the tags and had them. Um, I don't know if she had them on the ball pin or how she'd attach them. Um, from the picture on Facebook but she, I know she had them stacked like that and they just look so cute um, so I wanted to give them a go so I've done these uh, they've been backed um, in fact they're all backed with um, put just some plain um, cream coloured paper and then I've stenciled on them so they're great for writing on even the little tag um, is uh, able to be written on there and um, I've just put some cute little animals on here and just decorated them up so I wanted to do these two so uh, yeah let's make a start on these and then I've got a couple of other ideas that I want to get to as well uh, let's work on this one next first things first I need to glue it all down to um, some paper that I'm working on so just using my glue stick. So how's everybody doing? I hope you're all doing well. I think I alluded in to in one of my um, other videos of either on the Monday or the actual Design Team Tuesday video that uh, Rachel, Rachel Bella Crafts is doing um, another Christmas craft off collaboration this year for the month of November. <gasps> Super excited for that. Yeah, super excited to be a part of that again this year. Um, she's got so many um, wonderful um, crafters and she's got some new channels as well. That is going to be so exciting. So I hope she didn't mind me chatting about it. I can't show you the kits or anything because she's not released them or anything. But as soon as she does, I will let you know on my channel. Um, but oh, they are just absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Which means I've seen Tracy Fox has released a couple of Christmas kits. Um, and I've got my eye on one from jo um, Joey Cardmaker. Um, I've not used any of his stuff before. Um, and I was watching Gail Agostinelli and um, she was using his um, Christmas folk kit. Oh, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm thinking I might just have to go and get that myself <laughs> and um, we can have a little play with that one because I need to start making Christmas stuff. Yeah, I need to start getting all that stuff sorted. Okay, so we get these backed. a moment to dry so what I want to do I'm going to skip <coughs> to my next project because that needs to be glued down as well is I want to turn this um, I want to back this and then I'm going to fold this all up behind here um, so that it pulls out um, I've done them with smaller tags that are half um, this sides um, and you fold them and then they open all out and you can write all over it but I wanted to use one of these tags so I need to glue this down and I'm thinking I might have that round there to hold it or something so let me grab another glue page and we get this one gluing down as well and then that's a couple of bits of ephemera that we've got going to start with so yeah, just having a little play, making up some fun ephemera pieces. 
just to fill in the pockets um, but I'm thinking predominantly um, to create myself extra writing space because um, I do like a, um, a good lot of writing space in my journals for me personally anyway um, all right let's see if we can line this up exactly we might have to do a little bit of trimming that looks quite straight you will just trim up if there's anything overhanging yeah there's a little bit okay so that needs to dry before we can finish that one please shall we do the third one and get them all glued and then hopefully by the time we've done that the um, first one should be ready so I've got another piece of um, cream paper here Sounds like there's a crow, cow, 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 as they go. I don't know, is it cowing? The noise they make. A crow, um, I don't think it's a crow, it's be a, probably a rook, because we usually get them flying over, although I haven't seen any for ages or haven't heard any. But then it's dark in the mornings, it's dark um, fairly early in the evenings now. <laughs> the night's drawing in. Um, so yeah, we don't see them flying over in their flocks like we used to. They're still about. We're supposed to be getting some frosts, um, later, um, this week. Now that we've had all that rain and thunderstorms that they predicted, we're then supposed to get some really, really cold snaps, so uh, I hope I don't see that little hog. In a way, I hope I don't see the little hog um, in the garden during the day, um, because if I do, that means he's got to go to the RSPCA hospital, which means he'll have to go to, well, hotel. He'll have to go to the hog hotel to be looked after, fattened up, before he can then come back later next year or earlier into next year possibly even later this year if we have any mild spells I know that other one came back um, and be fattened up but uh, by now they should be thinking of hibernating during the day for definite and if I see him out on a cold night I definitely want to uh, get him in take him there they treat and they do all the um, worming and fleeing and defleeing and stuff. Um, so that uh, really looks after them, fattens them up. And then uh, we'll get a call to go and collect him to release him back into the garden. They had so many that, uh, well, they get so many. Um, last year that they didn't come and release them themselves they were just giving them back to um, the people that brought them that wanted them um, to release them themselves so uh, yeah I do like to know that little hogs are safe endangered they are. You don't get many of them nowadays. It doesn't help with uh, neighbours. Um, we've got fencing and it was all open down the bottom for the hog to wander like where our back garden. Ours goes to a bit of a point and then you've got the row of the houses that are there. Row of the houses there and then there was this thin channel down there because the deer used to walk down there, come into our garden and then out because our garden... Um, Back to front is all open with a patio going around the house. And um, ne our next door neighbour, not our joining one, but this um, this side of us, when he put his new shed in, he put a um, thing across there and blocked it all off. And then when our adjoining neighbours did their fence, um, they blocked the one off that went down that way. So literally it's all been blocked off. 
That's, uh, why I'm so glad our garden from front to back is open so that deers can just come in from the front, wander around, safely get out, don't get stuck or anything in there. And at the front we haven't got fences, we've got hedges, so they've got a nice little, where our hedge, um, our one at the front with our little brick wall ends and meets our neighbour's um, hedge along here. Um, there's a little hole in the corner there where um, all the animals just funnel through there and out over night time. Right, I'm just going to hold this up to my eyes to fussy cut this bit because it's a little tricky. Normally, if I'm if I remember I'm backing these, I won't fussy cut this bit until I've um, stuck the backing on. But I wasn't sure what I was doing with these because I I left them as a row. Okay, so we can make a start on this one. Uh, inky, let's do some inky. I think I might want to do the stenciling before I do the inking all the way around, especially on the back. So let's do that. Switch to the vintage photo. Let's just grab in my pad and my stencil. There we go. I don't want it too dark on here, just nice and light. Yeah, just um, takes away um, the, well it's not stark white because I've used a cream one, but uh, it just adds a little something onto the back of here, which is nice. I'm even going to do the little tiddler. There we go. Brilliant. Okay. So now I can finish off the inking. So where were we? We're done all around there so we do the back because we're going for the grungy look in my woodland journal it's a bit dim in here yeah there's enough light coming in it's uh i'm not sure if we're going to get any more rain i don't it might, it's, it's kind of like that damp, misty kind of drizzle in the air. You don't know it's raining, but everywhere's wet <laughs> kind of rain. Really fine. Okay, now what I did with the other one was to reinforce it. I did my little holes, didn't I? So let's grab a bit of card. This is just some craft card. A tiny little punch. We want one. Oh, they keep getting stuck in here now. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And let's give these a quick ink as well. So yeah, I want to start doing some Christmas crafting, get organised and sorted with my Christmas stuff. But I do have a lot of unfinished um, projects um, that I really do feel I'm going to need to get done at some point. So 
I've got the Christmas um, Craft Off collaboration through November um, and I don't think I'm going to do December daily this year um, because I've got so many different projects. I've got all my slow stitching stuff I'm doing. I've got all the Fabric Fridays that we do and there's going to be lots of fun Christmas stuff um, with the Fabric Fridays. There's obviously journals that I want to make as well that are um, Christmassy um, but I also want to do winter I don't just do um, Christmas I don't tend to um, me personally follow Christmas in a traditional sense but I just love all of the images and and things like that um, but uh, I, yeah I want to do some winter sort of like non non Christmas seasonal ones as well so I'm just push pump a little hole, bit down centre in these, ready. I know you, some of you put, would say, oh, why don't you put that on here first? But I can't see through this to make sure I'm getting them together. So this is just the way I like to do it to, um, to be able to ensure I... Um, get them central okay so those two are for that one right my fingers are a bit sticky I'm sticking to everything right so I think I then glued these on that was the next stage wasn't it I'm trying to remember how I did this because I did it the other day and then thought oh actually make a fun little project to do on camera so I just put some glue on these and then I'm just going to put that at the top do you know what while that's drying I'm gonna um I'm gonna put my light on because I'm struggling to see here let me just attack connect it up get a bit bright and then we go that's a bit better excuse the mess of my mat you can tell I've been using walnut stain it's got very very grungy so we're going to do this on all of them I will clean my mat before um, I switch out and start doing Christmas stuff definitely, definitely clean it before then Okay, so you can go there, and do the one on here. And we're about there. Put that one. So we'll wait you down as well. Okay, so while they're drying, this one should be ready to just trim up anything on this edge, isn't it? Yeah, I can go. Like so. And then there's just a little bit along here. That needs trimming. There we go. Move these up, give myself a little bit of space. We can then do what I want to do, and that's fold this and fold that flush along there. Then I want to fold this back on itself. Let's make sure we get that straight. Like so. And then that little bit I am still going to keep on here. I'm just going to fold it like so. Let me get my bone fold up. Make sure that's all burnished down. 
Now what I want to do is cut that top bit off. So let's just give myself a bit of space. Bring in my chomper. And let's take this bit off the top. There we go. And we do the corners. That way. That way. There we go. So now. When we turn the tag over, we have all that writing space, front and back, to use. Just wondering if I want to do a bit of stenciling on that. I don't think I do. I think I will leave that completely plain, but we do need to give it a bit of an ink um, up around here anyway. So let's, let's ink up here. Okay, so where have we got? Let's uh, just give this a bit of an ink. Uh, I want to do it in the middle there, down this head. Oops. So now we're on to this side. Give this an ink while the ink's out. Because what I'm thinking of is just having that. Let's fold it in half. going to glue it down at the front but not at the back and then that you can still open you can write on it but that little flat bit there would tuck in yeah that's how I want that one to go so I want to glue this side down Just going to do a bead of glue along here just so that that doesn't come completely out like so these should be dry now so I am going to um, leave this weighted just to the side of me here to dry 
and we will come back to our little tags. So what I now do is punch the hole um, back in um, here on all of them. Still be a bit gluey, it's getting stuck. There you go, there we go. So that's those done. Now we can glue the um, one on the back, the hole enforcer on the back. And then, because we can just line it completely up with the hole. Perfect. There we go, wipe that one down, do this one, there we go, wipe that one down, our last one. There we go. Oops. Wipe that down on there. Okay. So this should be dry enough. I'm just going to have a quick sip of my tea before it goes cold. Okay, so that is now stuck down there, but you can pull it out right completely on it, and then that can um, just tuck back in under there. Lovely. So what I want to do is attach a little um, tab on the top of here, and I was just going to use... Some of the bits here that I've got, just some scrappy little bits. Just a little something on the top there. Yeah, I like that one on there. Bring in my stapler and we can just attach this onto here. Oops, it's come out, that's come out. Like so. That looks about centre. And I'll just grab my tweezers and flatten the back so that it's not rough or catches. And now we can just add if we want any more decoration on there because that doesn't impede writing on any of those other pages. Okay, so what do we want to put on the front? Let's have a little look and see. don't know whether I want that there. whether that across there might be quite nice I know it covers up quite a bit of that but I don't mind that actually mm. 
I don't think it needs anything else actually. I'm just wondering now if I want a bit of material under that. I've got some here. No, I think I like it as it is because I want to keep it quite flat for writing. So let's just give this an ink. To, if I want a little extra pocket. For another little ticket. Actually, I think I might. So I am going to just do some glue along this edge and glue along this edge. And then I'm going to try and get that centre, like so. And then I think, oh, that one's quite, I think I'll go with this one. Can just tuck in the front there for a little bit of extra. Um, journaling space and I'm just wondering if I've got some of the foliage left I've got one of those left haven't I could put that in there as well and we could always have a little animal what have we got left we could have the little owl see what that looks like flying out Excuse me. So while that's drying, let's decide on. Um, I'm getting very low on these. I need to order myself some more. I need to find. I, these aren't. Um, these are Draper um, hole punch tools um, that were with my old metal one that um, I had a whole load, so I didn't bother buying any We Are Memory Keeper ones. Um, but it's knowing what size. Um, that I need to go for um, because I wouldn't mind getting a pack of the different coloured ones that um, we are memory keepers have. Okay, so we should be dry enough on these to be able to put our eyelets in, set our little eyelets. There we go. Yeah, definitely having the, oh, I nearly put it the wrong way. Um, having the reinforcement of the card really helps with, ow, oh, that was my wrist. Really helps keep them nice and flat. Ooh. Okay, come on wrist, one more to do, one more to do. Ow, there we go. Okay, so there are three ready. Um, and then all I've done to decorate them up is I've left that plane at the top there because it was beautiful pattern, but I might do a bit more um, on here on this one. I'm wondering whether the big stag would go on here. He would, look at that, just fits beautifully. Okay, so he's going to go on there. Um, and I want... I want a little label down there, that looks nice. What do we want on that one? Give us two match ups. Oh, a little fox, cute little fox. Oh, I think I might have to do the little fox. We've got some little bunnies. What about the little bunny? No, I think it's got to be the fox. And then I didn't have any animal on the front. I just put a label. Okay, let's have a little look and see what little labels we've got in here. Oh, 
don't like that. What have we got under here? Just looking to see notes. What about we have notes on there? And then I'll need a little something. I use the one improved. Um, that's too big to go on there. What else have we got? Specimen notes. Just wondering actually whether the species now it needs something to fill it, doesn't it? What's in here? Are these all a bit too big in these ones? Unless I do that one. Filled notebook. It's a bit big. What about notes? Oh we've got notes on there, so I could have I don't like the colour anyway. Okay. Oh, I'm being indecisive now, aren't I? Trying to find that perfect, perfect label. No. What about unless I have that and... No idea whether these are the right words, but we have that over there I think I want a slightly smaller one is that a smaller yeah there's one there that says date Yeah, there we go. I'm just I'm gonna go with that before I take up way too much time trying to decide on what I want on these. Okay. Yeah, because we're at 37 already, so 37 minutes. So there we go, that's that one. I am literally just going to tuck that in there. Oh, I see, okay. Let's have you poking out the back. Label down there. And then I'm just going to have him as if he's flying out. Yeah, I like that. Nice little collection. And it's got all this wonderful extra writing space. Opens out perfectly. That's really nice. That's one done. Let's finish this one off. Um, and then, yeah, we've made a couple of bits of ephemera with um, a good amount of writing space on the back of them. seen the muntjac deers in our garden for ages we were putting out um, some apples for them but uh, they just haven't been coming in I think the slugs have been eating the apples which in a way has been keeping the um, hedgehogs in food so that's good but yeah we Pre-COVID, um, we used to get them quite frequently. They would pop along in. And then during the COVID lockdown, um, they would spend the day just curled up asleep in our garden. Um, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, but then everything opened back up again after COVID and never see them for months and months and months. And then we got the odd few visits every now and again, but they really aren't regular to the garden like they used to be which is sad because I used to love seeing the little muntjacs come in 
Um, I used to name them all. <laughs> uh, never mind. That's the way it goes. They're probably... I don't know if... Um, I know that there's been a lot of housing developments um, since um, COVID and um, I know a lot of people were doing a lot to their gardens because obviously during lockdown that's the only space they had so they were there was a lot of stuff going on and I just wonder if it's kind of a blocked a bit of their path and just stopped them all coming round because as nice as it is to know that they come to the garden I'm sure they just didn't come to my garden <laughs> I'm sure they would travel around a few of the gardens on the estate Hubby still sees them when he goes out for um, a run, um, especially of an evening when he gets home from work and um, he does a run. He will, um, he will often see them. Perfect. He'll often take a photo and say, "Yeah, look, I saw these deers out on my run." I was like, "Oh." they're so lovely but I do miss them coming in the garden but I have photos and memories that I can cherish of them coming in and I'm sure they will pop along again at some point Get a random visit from um, one or two of them okay so that's that one I'm still not sure if I'm going to put anything at the top but let's get our little fox on Moved him. There we go. I did put a bit of material. Just looking at the one that I've uh, made here, I had a bit of material down the bottom. Um, but that's fine. I don't think I need any on this one. That's that one. Let's put this on. I think I can hear, yes, I can hear the robin singing. Oh, nice. That is so lovely. I had a little dunnock bopping around in the garden um, the other day, which was really, really nice. And then the robin came in and they were chasing each other round and round um, the garden because the robins are very territorial. Right, I'm just going to pop that on there. Like so. Okay. I just wonder. Oh, he's upside down. <laughs> yeah, I think I like that at the top there. Let's give this a quick little ink. Just, <coughs> excuse me. Just needed something on that top bit. And then I'll grab a bulb pin and we can put these all together. And yeah, there we go. That's at least two we've done. I'm not quick at crafting. Not quick at crafting. Okay. Get you straight, little bug. Okay. Let's grab a bulb pin. I just got that pack from Amazon. They're nothing um, fancy. So we want one, two, three. And then I usually turn it down like so. So there we go. So that was my first one, my little owl poking out there. And then this one, oh, I love them, aren't they so good? 
and I've got one more here which I will finish and do off the camera and then we did this lovely um oh, I'm just thinking I should have had another one there to hold it but that's fine that once it's in um clipped in because obviously you will have to clip it into your journal let's see if I've got a paper clip um it's a small oh there's a little goldy one there look if I that's still not going to hold that together but it holds it um better I might I might just clip that that side clip that into the page on a journal so like um here we can clip it into a page can't we onto a journal page that looks really nice on there actually onto a little journal page yeah I really like that so I hope you've enjoyed crafting along with me and I will be back um, I will show you the completed journal I'll do a flip through now once she's completed um, so there will be that video to look out for um, and then yeah some more crafting fun happy crafting everybody take care bye